लॉर्ड गुड इवनिंग एक बार फिर से आप सभी लोगों को प्रभु यीशु मसीह के नाम में स्वागत है आई वेलकम यू ऑल ऑन बिहाफ ऑफ ओल्ड यू क्रॉस मिनिस्ट्री एंड दिस इज द विल ऑफ गॉड कि हम लोग एक बार फिर से परमेश्वर के उस अनुग्रह में बैठने वाले हो सके हम धन्यवाद देते हैं प्रभु यीशु मसीह का कि उन्होंने ये समय नियत किया कि हम लोग एक बार फिर से परमेश्वर की उस सिंहासन के करीब आ सके कि जो परमेश्वर ने उस तय समय पर हमारे लिए रख छोड़ा है भजन संहिता वन में लिखा हुआ है क्या ही धन्य है वो पुरुष जो दुष्टों की युक्ति पर नहीं चलता और न पापियों के मार में खड़ा होता और न ठट्ठा करने वालों की मंडली में बैठता है परंतु वह तो यहवा की व्यवस्था से प्रसन्न रहता और उसकी व्यवस्था पर रात दिन ध्यान करता रहता है वो उस वृक्ष के समान है जो बहती नालियों के किनारे लगाया गया है और अपनी ऋतु में फलता और जिसके पत्ते कभी मुरझाते नहीं इसलिए जो कुछ वो पुरुष करे वो सफल होता है परमेश्वर अपने वचन के पढ़े और सुने जाने पर आशीष थे एक बार फिर से आई वेलकम यू ऑल ऑन बिहाफ ऑफ होल्ड यू क्रॉस मिनिस्ट्री इस वक्त जितने लोग भी मेरे साथ 
जूम पे हैं जितने लोग भी मुझे फेसबुक लाइव देख रहे हैं और आने वाले समय में जितने लोग भी यूट्यूब पे हमारे साथ होंगे परमेश्वर हम सबको बहुत से आशीषित करेगा सो आई अगेन वेलकम यू ऑल एंड लेट्स सेलिब्रेट अ टाइम विच इज गोइंग टू बी द्लेसेड फॉर एस ईच वन ऑफ एस सो लेट्स प्रे एंड 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 आर ऑर्डर ऑफ वर्शिप विल बी लाइक दिस Initially, we'll go into the opening prayer. Then, after our uh, segment, praise and worship segment, which will be led by Nilisha, and then after uh, we'll go into the weekly prayer uh, points, जो हमारे पास में प्रार्थना निवेदन आते हैं पूरे सप्ताह में, उन सभी विषयों के लिए हम लोग प्रार्थना करेंगे as a family, as a congregation. Then after वो समय होगा जब परमेश्वर के वचन में जाएंगे. Word of God will be shared by Brother Elvis. He is with us from Bangalore. And then after our, our testimony time will be there. And after that closing prayer and benediction. During that, if anyone on Facebook have any prayer request, वो अपने आप comment box में लिख सकते हैं. If anybody has prayer request. Yeah, yeah, here uh, as at zoom uh, you can write at the chat box as well so let's pray and begin our worship समर्थ पिता प्रभु परमेश्वर हम एक बार फिर से प्रभु आपका धन्यवाद देते हैं परमेश्वर इस शाम के लिए प्रभु जी आज की सुबह के लिए आज के पूरे दिन के लिए परमेश्वर की आपने हम में से हर एक को संभाल के रखा परमेश्वर और अपनी उस योजना पे चलने के लिए प्रभु जी हमें आगे बढ़ाया प्रेरित किया परमेश्वर जो सिर्फ और सिर्फ आपकी योजना थी परमेश्वर और ये हमारा विश्वास है प्रभु यशु कि अगर हम जिंदों की जमीन पर पाए जाते हैं परमेश्वर हमारे जीवन में घटने वाली हर एक घटना हर एक पल प्रभु जी बीतता हुआ समय प्रभु यशु मसीह सिर्फ और सिर्फ आप की आशीष में है परमेश्वर आपके अनुग्रह में है परमेश्वर हम धन्यवाद देते हैं परमेश्वर इस वक्त जितने लोग भी यहाँ पे जूम पे हैं परमेश्वर जितने लोग भी हमारे साथ फेसबुक पे जुड़े हुए हैं परमेश्वर मैं पर्सनली धन्यवाद देता हूँ एज एन फैमिली एज एन कांग्रीगेशन परमेश्वर फ्रॉम यू होल्ड योर क्रॉस मिनिस्ट्री परमेश्वर कि आपने हम सबको एक मन एक चित होकर के इकट्ठा किया है प्रभु यीशु होने दीजिएगा परमेश्वर आज की वर्षिप प्रभु ये सिर्फ और सिर्फ आपको भाने वाली हो ना कि किसी मनुष्य को परमेश्वर हमारा प्रार्थना करना परमेश्वर हमारा वचन का पढ़ा जाना परमेश्वर हमारे निवेदन प्रभु येशु हम हमारे गीतों का गाया जाना परमेश्वर सिर्फ और सिर्फ आपको भाने वाला हो सके परमेश्वर पवित्र आत्मा हम आपका स्वागत करते हैं अपने मध्य में प्रभु येशु हो सकता है हम बहुत सारी चिंताओं से गिरे हुए हो परमेश्वर बहुत सारे वाइब्रेशंस हमारे दिमाग में हो परमेश्वर बहुत सारी कमी घटिया हो हमारे मनो में परमेश्वर लेकिन ये हमारा विश्वास है प्रभु यीशु कि आज इस वर्षिप के बाद में परमेश्वर हमारे मनो में वो शांति होगा वो पीस होगा वो सुकून होगा परमेश्वर जो सिर्फ और सिर्फ आपसे मिलता है परमेश्वर और आपकी वो पहली आशीष परमेश्वर मैं तुम्हें शांति दिए जाता हूँ परमेश्वर मैं आपके नाम से यहाँ बैठे हर एक जन के जीवन में डिक्लेयर करता हूँ प्रभु यशु धन्यवाद देता हूँ एक बार फिर से प्रभु इस सुंदर समय के लिए परमेश्वर हमारी इस वर्षिप को प्रभु यशु आप अपने कंट्रोल में ले प्रभु यशु हमारे दिमाग को आप अपने कंट्रोल में ले परमेश्वर धन्यवाद देता हूं प्रभु जी ब्रदर एल्विस के लिए प्रभु की आवाज हमारे बीच में है प्रभु यीशु जब वो परमेश्वर का वचन लेकर के आते हैं प्रभु यीशु आप उनके मुख से बोलें परमेश्वर हम आपको सुनने वाले हो सके परमेश्वर पवित्र आत्मा की सामर्थ्य उनको भरे परमेश्वर निलिशा जिस वक्त गीतों को गाती हैं प्रभु यीशु आप उनको छुए परमेश्वर ताकि वो गीतों गीतों का गाया जाना परमेश्वर सिर्फ और सिर्फ आपको भाने वाला हो सके और आप तक पहुंचने वाला हो सके परमेश्वर हमारे प्रार्थना निवेदन प्रभु यीशु आप तक पहुंचने वाले हो सके प्रभु यीशु हमारी हर एक टेक्निकल डिवाइस को परमेश्वर आप अपने कंट्रोल में लीजिएगा प्रभु यीशु हमारे घरों को प्रभु यीशु आप अपने ब्लड से सील कीजिएगा परमेश्वर अपने एंजल के रिश्तों का बाड़ा परमेश्वर हमारे घर के चारों ओर रखिएगा प्रभु यीशु क्योंकि जहां पे आप हैं परमेश्वर वहां सिर्फ और सिर्फ जीवन की रोशनी है परमेश्वर वहां सिर्फ अनुग्रह है वहां सिर्फ उद्धार है परमेश्वर एक बार फिर से प्रभु पवित्र आत्मा हम आपके कंट्रोल में वर्षिप देते हैं आप लीड करें आप अगुवाई करें प्रभु यशु मसीह के वसीले से आमेन 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 so once again thank you so much and now i'll invite nilisha to lead us in uh, present worship aap sabhi ko jai masi ki aaj main gaungi tera lahu tera lahu bada kimti hai prabhu तेरा लहू बड़ा की मुक्ति है तेरा लहू बड़ा की मुक्ति है प्रभु तेरा लहू बड़ा की मुक्ति है क्योंकि उस लहू में जो ताकत है जिससे हम पाते हैं छुट्टे का क्योंकि उस लहू में जो ताकत है जिससे हम गाते हैं छुट्टे का 
तेरा लहू बड़ा कीमती है प्रभु तेरा लहू बड़ा कीमती है तेरा लहू बड़ा कीमती है प्रभु तेरा लहू बड़ा कीमती है तूने वो सारी दुनिया को बचाया है तूने वो लहू बहाया है सारी दुनिया को बचाया है कभी तूने किसी से न कुछ मांगा कभी तूने किसी से न कुछ चाहा कभी तूने किसी से न कुछ मांगा कभी तूने किसी से न कुछ चाहा तेरा लहू बड़ा कीमती है प्रभु तेरा लहू बड़ा कीमती है तेरा लहू बड़ा कीमती है प्रभु तेरा लहू बड़ा कीमती है अब मैं दूसरा गाना गाऊंगी वर अ ब्यूटिफुल नेम इट इज युवा तिवार Your hidden glory in creation, now revealing you are Christ. What a beautiful name it is! What a beautiful name it is! The name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a beautiful name it is! Nothing compares to this. What a beautiful name it is the name of Jesus You didn't born heaven without us so Jesus you brought heaven down Mason was great our love was great what could separate us? Now, what a wonderful name it is! What a wonderful name it is! The name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a wonderful name it is! Nothing compares to this. What a wonderful name it is! The name of Jesus. What a wonderful name it is! the name of jesus that could not told you the wheel to before you to silence the boast of sin and grave the heavens are roaring the praise of your glory for you are raised to life again you have no rival you have no equal now and forever god you reign yours is the kingdom yours is the glory yours is the name above all names what a powerful name it is what a powerful name it is the name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a powerful name it is. Nothing can stand against. What a powerful name it is. The name of Jesus. May God bless you, Nilisha. Thank you so much for uh, powerful uh, present worship. May God bless you. In fact, uh, sometimes uh, 
मैं भी इनकरेज होता हूँ uh, मुझे भी लगता है कि मुझे भी गाना चाहिए एंड आई आई ऑलवेज जब भी मुझे मौका मिलता है मेरा मेरा एक बड़ा पसंदीदा सॉन्ग है डेट इज सेनाओ का यहोवा हमारे संग संग है याकूब का परमेश्वर हमारा ऊंचा गढ़ है सेनाओ का यहोवा हमारे संग संग है याकूब का परमेश्वर हमारा ऊंचा गढ़ है जिसने आकाश बनाया जिसने पृथ्वी बनाई ओ जिसने आकाश बनाया जिसने पृथ्वी बनाई वो सर्वशक्तिमान प्रभु है वो यो हमारे संग संग है वो सर्वशक्तिमान प्रभु है वो यो हमारे संग संग है सेनाओं का यो हमारे संग संग है याकूब का परमेश्वर हमारा ऊंचा गढ़ है सेनाओं का यो हमारे संग संग है याकूब का परमेश्वर हमारा ऊंचा गढ़ है लाजर को जिसने जिलाया जकई को जिसने बचाया ओ, लाजर को जिसने जिलाया जकई को जिसने बचाया वो वायदे को करता है पूरा वो यह हमारे संग संग है वो वायदे को करता है पूरा वो यह हमारे संग संग है सेनाओं का यह हमारे संग संग है याकूब का परमेश्वर हमारा ऊंचा गढ़ है सेनाओं का यह हमारे संग संग है याकूब का परमेश्वर हमारा ऊंचा गढ़ है यस प्रभु यीशु आप हमारे ऊंचा गढ़ है परमेश्वर हमने आपको अपने जीवन में सबसे ऊंचे पे रखा है परमेश्वर आप जिस वक्त प्रभु जी हम कमी घटी में होते हैं परमेश्वर बीमारी में होते हैं तंगी में होते हैं परमेश्वर हम आपकी तरफ आंखें उठा के देखते हैं प्रभु यीशु क्योंकि हमें विश्वास है परमेश्वर हमारी चंगाई परमेश्वर हमारा छुटकारा परमेश्वर हमारा उद्धार परमेश्वर हमारी हर कमी घटी की भरपूरी परमेश्वर वो सिर्फ और सिर्फ आपसे पूरी होने वाली है प्रभु यशु हम धन्यवाद देते हैं प्रभु एक बार फिर से कि आपने यहाँ बैठे हर एक जन को चुना है परमेश्वर और अपने अपने लहू से धो करके परमेश्वर उस उस उद्धार की तरफ प्रभु जी ले चल के लिए तत्पर किया है तैयार कर रहे हैं परमेश्वर कि जिस वक्त आपका आगमन हो प्रभु यीशु तो हम तैयार पाए जा सके परमेश्वर और आपके उस दाहिने हाथ खड़े होने वाले हो सके परमेश्वर जो आप हमसे वायदा करके गए हैं प्रभु यीशु धन्यवाद देते हैं प्रभु जी थैंक यू जीसस थैंक यू फादर थैंक यू होली स्पिरिट फॉर सच अ ब्यूटीफुल टाइम फॉर सच अ प्रेशियस टाइम परमेश्वर यू हैव यू हैव अनॉइंटेड ईच वन ऑफ अस हु आर सिटिंग विद अस परमेश्वर ओवर द Zoom एंड ओवर द Facebook लाइव प्रभु यीशु वी आई आई लिटरली परमेश्वर मैं धन्यवाद देता हूं प्रभु यीशु कि आपने हम सब को चुना है और अपनी पनाह में रखा है प्रभु यीशु मसीह के वसीले से आमीन 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 So again, एक बार फिर से आप सभी का स्वागत है आज के इस वर्षिप में और अगर किसी के भी कोई प्रार्थना निवेदन है once again, I am requesting, जितने लोग भी मेरे साथ फेसबुक में हैं वो अपने कमेंट बॉक्स में लिख सकते हैं जितने लोग भी मेरे साथ इस वक्त जूम पे हैं वो चैट बॉक्स में लिख सकते हैं किसी का बर्थडे है किसी की वेडिंग एनिवर्सरी है किसी भी तरीके के घर में कोई बीमारी है जो शायद हमारे पास मैसेज नहीं पहुंच पाया है प्लीज आप हमारे साथ शेयर करें एज एन फैमिली एज एन कॉन्ग्रीगेशन सिर्फ मेरा परिवार आपके लिए प्रार्थना नहीं कर रहा है बल्कि बहुत सारे परिवार हैं जो आपके प्रार्थना कर रहे हैं क्रॉस द ग्लोब प्रार्थना कर रहे हैं सो मे गॉड ब्लेस ईच वन ऑफ अस और अब ये वो समय होगा कि जब हम अपने प्रेयर रिक्वेस्ट पॉइंट्स में जाएंगे एंड आई एम जस्ट गोइंग टू शेयर दैट डॉक्यूमेंट विद यू जस्ट गिव मी अ सेकंड ओके सो Where is that document? Okay, here. All right. Okay. 
So first of all, we'll pray for our nation, all the churches and the congregations all across globe, not in India, all across globe, our president, our prime minister, our state ministers, and all the government officials and all, all across the world. We'll pray for uh, Reverend Akash Roy Chaudhary as he had heart attack on last Monday and he's in ICU and uh, his kidney got uh, affected due to diabetes and uh, he had one dialysis yet, but response is very slow. Heart is pumping only 30%. So may God uh, heal him, bless him, and give the strength to the entire family and to the end, uh, Akash Rai Chaudhary as well. We'll pray for Sister Meera Devi as she is suffering with liver problem. We'll continue to pray for Mr. Ravi as he is suffering from uh, liver infection and for all his financial needs. We'll continue to pray for Sister Suman for baby blessing. We'll continue to pray for Sapna for uh, Sister Sapna for baby blessing. We'll uh, pray for uh, daughter of Seema Vedantam ji as uh, she is looking for a uh, good marriage match for uh, her daughter. Daughter, so may God uh, take the lead and take the entire charge of this uh, vision and plan. And uh, we'll continue to pray for uh, her son Eddie because uh, today. In fact, it's evening now. Today was the convoc convocation of uh, him. And uh, we'll continue to pray for Sister Neela Michael for baby blessing. We'll continue to pray for Bhagwan Singh and family for baby blessing. We'll continue to pray for all the old age people in all the congregation for God's strength and blessing in their lives. We'll continue to pray for our youth who are looking for their employment after finishing their education, college, and higher education simultaneously. We'll continue to pray for all the missionaries who are working for King kingdom of God and sharing the gospel all across the world for all their needs and requirements, protection and for health, good health, families all across the globe. We'll continue to pray for Hold Your Cross and the entire congregation to remain in faith. So I'll request uh, Sister Madhu Chauhan, if you can unmute yourself and lead us in this segment, please. I'll Sister Madhu Chauhan say Nivedan Karunga ki agar wo hamare liye start. Yes. Praise the Lord. Aye, hum prarthna karein. Oh Jesus, thank you Lord. Hallelujah, 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 Hallelujah. Dhanyavad karte hain. Hamari jivi tar samarthi ko daavan dhanyavad ke saath pita. Ham tere pavitr chhano par aate hain. Prabhu, Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Tere उपकारों के लिए तेरी भलाइयों के लिए हम गिन गिन कर आपको स्तुति करते हैं आपको धन्यवाद करते हैं आपको जय जयकार करते हैं प्रभु राजा ओ धन्यवाद 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 पिता हमें जीवित और संभाल कर सुरक्षित रखने के लिए हम आपको धन्यवाद करते हैं पिता आज हम प्रार्थना करते हैं पिता परमेश्वर प्रभु हमारे देश के लिए प्रभु राजा तो खुदावन हम अपनी कंट्री को आपके पवित्र हाथों में देते हैं प्रभु राजा हमारे देश के प्रभु राजा जितने भी सीनियर्स है प्रभु हमारे प्रेसिडेंट को हमारे प्राइम मिनिस्टर को होम मिनिस्टर को चीफ मिनिस्टर को जितने भी हमारे हाल लिया प्रभु मिनिस्टर्स हैं जितने भी एम पी हैं एम एल हम आपके हाथों में देते हैं प्रभु और हम दुआ करते हैं पिता परमेश्वर आप हमारे देश को चलाए प्रभु देश को आप चलाए प्रभु राजा ओ पिता परमेश्वर प्रभु राजा आप हमारे देश को चलाए प्रभु आप हमारे देश के नेताओं पर कब्जा करे प्रभु उनकी आत्माओं पर कब्जा करे उनके मनों पर कब्जा करे प्रभु राजा आप हमारे देश में शांति दे प्रभु राजा इस समय जरूरत है प्रभु हमारे देश में शांति दीजिए आपकी शांति हम मांगते हैं प्रभु राजा आपकी दया आपका अनुग्रह हम अपने देश के लिए मांगते हैं प्रभु राजा आप दया करें प्रभु हम प्रार्थना करते हैं जितनी भी हमारी कलिसियाए हैं प्रभु और जितनी भी हाल इंडिया प्रभु कलिसियाए हैं प्रभु तो दावन उन्हें हम आप ही के हाथों में देते हैं प्रभु राजा ओ पिता परमेश्वर हम प्रार्थना करते हैं पिता परमेश्वर खाले लुया प्रभु राजा खुदावन हमारी तमाम कलिसियाओं के लिए चर्चिस के लिए हम प्रार्थना करते हैं पिता परमेश्वर ओ प्रभु तेरा आत्मा कार्य करे प्रभु तेरा आत्मा कलिसिया में कार्य करे प्रभु राजा हाले लुया हाले लुया हरे कलिसिया पर ओ पवित्र आत्मा का भी शेख होने पर राजा हर कलिसिया पवित्र आत्मा की अगुवाई में चले प्रभु राजा हर कलिसिया में पवित्र आत्मा की सामर्थ कार्य करे प्रभु राजा हम प्रार्थना करते हैं पिता परमेश्वर हमारे देश के प्रेसिडेंट हमारे प्राइम मिनिस्टर और जितने भी स्टेट मिनिस्टर्स हैं प्रभु राजा जितने गवर्नमेंट ऑफिशियल्स हैं प्रभु खुदावनीशो हम उन सब के लिए दुआ करते हैं पिता परमेश्वर तेरे पवित्र हाथों में देते हैं प्रभु हमारे हाल लिया प्रभु हर एक व्यक्ति पर प्रभु हम आपका कब्जा मांगते हैं आपकी आत्मा का कब्जा मांगते हैं आपके रूह पाक का कब्जा मांगते हैं प्रभु राजा आपका आत्मा कार्य करे प्रभु हम धन्यवाद के साथ पिता हम प्रार्थना करते हमारे भाई आकाश रॉय चौधरी के लिए प्रभु राजा जब आपके दास प्रभु राजा 
एक क्रिटिकल कंडीशन में है प्रभु राजा आईसीओ में है प्रभु राजा हम दुआ करते हैं प्रभु राजा हम दुआ करते हैं प्रभु राजा उनके शरीर प्राण आत्म जीवन को हम धन्यवाद के साथ आपके हाथों में देते हैं प्रभु राजा हमारी आशा आपके ऊपर है प्रभु हमारा भरोसा आपके ऊपर है प्रभु राजा हम विश्वास करते हैं प्रभु राजा की आपने अपने दास के लिए प्रभु अपनी पीठ पर कोड़े खाए हैं प्रभु इनकी चंगाई के लिए आपने अपने आप को हरे लिया प्रभु उस कलवरी क्रूज पर प्रभु आपने परमेश्वर इनके छुटकारे के लिए अपना दाम चुका है प्रभु इनका दाम चुका है प्रभु राजा आपने इनके इनकी चंगाई के लिए कोड़े खाए हैं प्रभु आज हम दुआ करते हैं पिता परमेश्वर उनके हार्ट को उनके लीवर को उनकी किडनी को उनके शरीर के हर एक फंक्शन को खुदावन हम आपके हाथों में देते हैं प्रभु उनके शरीर का हर एक फंक्शन प्रभु तेरे हल तेरे अनुग्रह तेरी दया से चले प्रभु राजा पवित्र आत्मा आप उस आईसीओ में कार्य करें प्रभु आपके दास के ऊपर आप आत्मा कार्य करें प्रभु आपकी आत्मा की सामर्थ कार्य करें प्रभु राजा कोड़ो से हल प्रभु उस शिफा को आप रिलीज करे प्रभु भाई के शरीर प्राण आत्मा जीवन में आप रिलीज करे प्रभु आप भाई को चंगा करे प्रभु राजा विश्वास की प्रार्थना से रोगी चंगा हो जाएगा पर और उस परमेश्वर से उठाकर खड़ा कर देगा यदि उसने पाप किए हैं तो भी क्षमा किए जाएंगे आज हम दुआ करते हैं प्रभु आप उन्हें उठाकर खड़ा करें आप उन्हें परमेश्वर सुरक्षित वापस घर लेकर आए प्रभु राजा ताकि परमेश्वर आपके बीच में एक बड़ी गवाही को हम दे सके पिता हम दुआ करते हैं प्रभु सिस्टर मीरा देवी लिए प्रभु राजा जबकि वो अपने लीवर में हाल लिया प्रॉब्लम है खुदावन यीशु हम प्रार्थना करते हैं लीवर में उनके जो भी समस्या है प्रभु वो खुदावन यीशु आपने ही मनुष्य के शरीर के अंगों को बनाया प्रभु और आप ही चंगा करने की सामत रखते हैं प्रभु राजा इसी घड़ी प्रभु आप कह दीजिए उनके लिए कह दीजिए आपका एक वचन काफी है प्रभु उनकी चंगाई के लिए आपका वचन काफी है प्रभु अपने वचन के द्वारा आप इन बीमारों को चंगा करे प्रभु राजा हम दुआ करते हैं मिस्टर रवि के लिए प्रभु राजा जो भी लीवर इन्फेक्शन से हालिया प्रभु इस समय निकल रहे हैं प्रभु राजा खुदावन हम उनके लिए भी दुआ करते हैं प्रभु उनकी कंप्लीट हीलिंग के लिए हम दुआ करते हैं पिता अपना दास पर अपने दास पर अपना हाथ रखें आप पीछे दुवे हाथों से छू कर आप उन्हें चंगा करें प्रभु हम उनकी तमाम फाइनेंशियल नीड्स के लिए भी प्रार्थना करते हैं उनकी तमाम जरूरत प्रभु खुदावन आपके सब ये भंडार से पूरी होने पाए आप अपनी जरूरत के खोल कर उनकी उन्हीं की मदद सहायता करें प्रभु हम प्रार्थना करते हैं पिता परमेश्वर बहन सुमन के लिए भगवान सिंह भाई के परिवार के लिए प्रभु हम उनकी बेबी ब्लेसिंग के लिए प्रार्थना करते हैं पिता हम परमेश्वर प्रार्थना करते हैं सिस्टर सपना के बेबी ब्लेसिंग के लिए प्रार्थना करते हैं हम सिस्टर नीलम माइकल के बेबी ब्लेसिंग के लिए प्रार्थना करते हैं खुदावन ये तेरी बेटियां प्रभु तेरे पास है इन्होंने अपनी आंखें तुझ पर लगाई है प्रभु इन्होंने अपना भरोसा तुझ पर लगाया है प्रभु और तेरा वचन कहता है कि जो तुझ पर भरोसा करता है वो हर लिए कभी लज्जित नहीं होता उसका मुख कभी काला नहीं होता प्रभु खुदावन इन्होंने तुझ पर अपनी नजर उठाई है प्रभु खुदावन तू इनके इनके इन्हें गर्भ की संतान के आशीष दे प्रभु तू खुदावन इन्हें आशीष दे प्रभु राजा खुदावन तू इन्हें आशीष दे प्रभु इन्हें संतान के आशीष देकर अपने नाम की महिमा कर प्रभु राजा हारा की आप सारा को परमेश्वर आपने आशीष दिया प्रभु अन्ना की प्रार्थना को आपने सुना राहिल और लिया की आपने सुधि ली प्रभु आज अपनी इन बेटियों की भी सुधि लेकर प्रभु इनके जीवन में एक अद्भुत और सामर्थ्य कार्य करे प्रभु हम दुआ करते हैं सिस्टर सीमा वेदांतम जी की बेटी के लिए प्रभु राजा जबकि परमेश्वर के विवाह के लिए प्रभु उन्होंने अरेंजमेंट किया है प्रभु और खुदावन यशु हम प्रार्थना करते हैं पिता परमेश्वर प्रभु राजा ओ पिता परमेश्वर हम प्रार्थना करते हैं खुदावन यशु के नाम से प्रभु हाल लिया प्रभु हम उनके लिए दुआ करते हैं पिता परमेश्वर प्रभु खुदावन यशु आप उनके लिए कार्य करे प्रभु राजा ओ पिता परमेश्वर आप आत्मा उनकी हाल लिया प्रभु बेटी के मैरिज के लिए प्रभु प्रार्थना करते हैं पिता परमेश्वर प्रभु एक अच्छे विश्वासी जीवन साथी के लिए हम प्रार्थना करते हैं पिता परमेश्वर प्रभु उनके बेटे एडी के लिए प्रार्थना करते हैं प्रभु राजा जबकि हल लिया आज उनका कन्वर्सिकेशन है तो प्रभु हम दुआ करते हैं परमेश्वर तेरा आत्मा उनके लिए कार्य करे प्रभु राजा अपनी सामर्थ्य के द्वारा परमेश्वर आप उन्हें आशीष करे प्रभु राजा हम दुआ करते हैं पिता परमेश्वर खासकर प्रभु राजा हम तमाम उन ओल्ड एज के पीपल्स के लिए प्रार्थना करते हैं जितने भी ओल्ड एज में बुजुर्ग लोग रहते हैं खुदावन हम उनके लिए दुआ करते हैं पिता परमेश्वर प्रभु प्रार्थना करते पिता परमेश्वर तेरा आत्मा उन सबके जीवन में कार्य करे प्रभु राजा 
ओ खुदावन तू दया कर प्रभु उन्हें शरीर में बल दे ताकत दे प्रभु तेरा वचन कहता है मैं तुम्हारे बाल पकने तक तुम्हें संभाल कर रखूंगा उन्हें दीजिए इस वचन के अनुसार प्रभु इन तमाम बुजुर्गो को हम आपके हाथों में देते हैं प्रभु खुदावन आप उन्हें संभाले आपने कहा मैं तुम्हें लिए फिरता रहूंगा छुड़ाता भी रहूंगा खुदावन आप उन्हें अपने हाथों में ले प्रभु आप उनके हलो प्रभु आपने शारीरिक पारिवारिक जरूरतों को आप परमेश्वर उनकी जरूरतों को पूरा करे आपने हल्त में प्रभु भला चंगा रखे प्रभु हम प्रार्थना करते हैं पिता खासकर हमारे जवान उन जब नौजवानों के लिए प्रभु राजा जो अच्छे जॉब के लिए प्रभु राजा हाल लिया प्रभु तैयार हो रहे प्रभु खुदावन ईश्व अपनी एजुकेशन को कंप्लीट करके प्रभु एक अच्छी जॉब के लिए प्रभु देख रहे खुदावन हमारी दुआ है प्रभु कि आप हमारे जवानों को पिता अच्छी रोजगार दे प्रभु जितने भी बेरोजगार हैं प्रभु और जितने भी प्रभु अच्छी नौकरी ढूंढ रहे खुदावन तू उनके लिए मुहैया कर प्रभु तो यह गिरे है प्रभु उपाय करने वाला परमेश्वर अपने बच्चों के लिए उपाय करे प्रभु राजा हम प्रार्थना करते हैं पिता परमेश्वर हम तमाम उन मिशनरीज के लिए प्रार्थना करते हैं खुदावन जो परमेश्वर तेरे स्वर्ग राज्य की बढ़ोतरी के लिए प्रभु कार्य कर रहे हैं प्रभु जो खुदावन तेरे सुसमाचार को हाल लिया परमेश्वर जगह जगह पर प्रभु प्रचार कर रहे हैं प्रभु राजा हम उनकी जरूरतों के लिए प्रार्थना करते हैं हम उनकी प्रोटेक्शन के लिए प्रार्थना करते हैं जबकि हम देखते हैं प्रभु इस समय मसी सत्ता मसी लोगों पर सत्ताव का समय चल रहा है खुदावन हम उनकी सुरक्षा के लिए प्रार्थना करते हैं भजन सीता एक और भजन सीता नाइन्टी वन की सुरक्षा हम उनके लिए मांगते हैं प्रभु खुदावन आप अपने लहू में उन्हें कवर करें अपने स्वर्ण दूतों को भेज कर आप उनकी रक्षा करें खुदावन आप उनकी जरूरतों को पूरा करें उनके परिवारों की जरूरतों को पूरा करें इस समय प्रभु राजा खुदावन उन्हें आपकी जरूरत है प्रभु आपकी प्रोटेक्शन की जरूरत है प्रभु राजा आप उनकी सिपकाई को भी फलवंद करें और हजारों लाखों आत्माओं को बचाने का अनुग्रह आप उन्हें दीजिए पिता परमेश्वर पवित्र आत्मा आप उनके साथ रहकर कार्य करें प्रभु राजा हम दुआ करते हैं पिता होली और क्रॉस मिनिस्ट्री के तमाम जितने भी परिवार हैं खुदावन हम उन्हें तेरे सम्मुख लेकर आते हैं प्रभु हम उन सब परिवारों के लिए प्रार्थना करते हैं खुदावन तेरा ही आत्मा उन परिवारों में कार्य करे प्रभु तेरी ही सामर्थ उन परिवारों में कार्य करे प्रभु राजा एक एक परिवार को पिता अब विश्वास में मजबूत करे प्रभु आने वाले दिनों में परमेश्वर जब विश्वास परखा जाएगा तो खुदावन ये विश्वास में हल प्रभु पक्के निकलने पर राजा इनमें से कोई भी प्रभु तेरा इनकार ना करे प्रभु चाहे हालात कैसे भी क्यों ना हो परिस्थितियां कैसे भी क्यों ना हो प्रभु अपने क्रूस का अपने पति दिन का क्रूस उठाकर तेरे पीछे चलने के लिए खुदावन तू इनकी मदद कर प्रभु राजा इनके विश्वास को मजबूत कर इनके इनके घर के हालातों में प्रभु तू खुदावन अपनी आशीष और बरकत दे प्रभु राजा तू अपनी आशीष दे प्रभु राजा वो खुदावन तू इनके साथ रहे खुदावन तू इनके विश्वास को मजबूत कर प्रभु तो इन पर अनुग्रह कर इन परिवारों की सुरक्षा के लिए हम प्रार्थना करते हैं एक एक को प्रभु हम तेरे लहू के नीचे रखते हैं एक एक परिवार को अपने लहू में ढांपे प्रभु एक एक परिवार की रक्षा करे प्रभु हम दुआ करते हैं हमारे आज के वक्ता के लिए प्रभु राजा खुदाबंद हम तेरे दास को भी आपके हाथों में देते हैं प्रभु आज उनके द्वारा जो भी वचन दिया जाता है खुदाबंद तेरा वचन साठ गुना और सौ गुना फलवंत होने पर राजा हर एक हृदय को आज अच्छी भूमि बना प्रभु अच्छी भूमि बना प्रभु ताकि तेरे दास के द्वारा प्रभु जो भी वचन बोला जाता है वो पवित्र आत्मा की अगुवाई में और पवित्र आत्मा के द्वारा होने पर राजा एक एक वचन हृदय में कार्य करने पाए क्योंकि वचन कहता है कि तेरा वचन जीवित और दो धारी चौकी तलवार है जो गांठ गांठ और गुदे गुदे को आर पार छेद देता है प्रभु आज अपने वचन के द्वारा अपने बच्चों से बातें करें और अपने वचन के द्वारा उन्हें आशीषित करें पिता धन्यवाद करते हैं वक्ता को आपके लहू में कवर करते हैं खुदावन आप उनके साथ रहे रक्षा करें अभिषेक करें पवित्र आत्मा धन्यवाद करते हैं प्रभु आदर महिमा आप ही को देते हुए सारी प्रार्थना विनती प्यारे प्रभु यशु मसीह के जीवित और सामर्थ्य नाम से मांगते हैं आमीन कॉन्ग्रीगेशन वी वेलकम यू ब्रदर एलवेस Thank you so much. Uh, you are here, and I'll just give a little bit intro of yours. So, brother Elvis is uh, like like he. I have um, uh, met him last month uh, in Delhi, in fact. And uh, what the work he is doing, it it is beyond our imagination. 
practice this. So I'll not take much of time and invite Brother Elvis and to give the entire intro of yours to the congregation and the entire viewership over the Facebook. So Brother Elvis, once again, we welcome you. Over to you, please. You are on mute, please. Uh, praise the Lord, everyone. Um, a very warm evening to each and every one of you all. It's pretty crazy raining out here in Bangalore. I hear, I, I'm sure you're hearing the noise right behind me. Um, it's, 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 a, it's, it's really heavy rains. So yes, uh, thank you, Brother Ashish, and, um, uh, and also uh, Shalmi for giving me this opportunity and uh, especially to share the word today and to join each and every one of you all today. Um, before we start, I would like uh, um, you all to just open your Bible to the book of Deuteronomy. So before I start this word, I want to share uh, what our promises, the book of Deuteronomy chapter 28, verses 11 to 14. Uh, if someone can read out over there, that would be great. Deuteronomy 28, 11 to 14. Is anyone want to read? Chapter? 28, 11 to 14. Verses 11 to 14. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verses 11 to 14. Okay, I'm reading. And the Lord will grant you plenty of goods in the fruit of your body, in the increase of your livestock and in the produce of your ground, in the land of which the Lord swear to your fathers to give you. The Lord will open to you his good treasure, the heavens to give the rain to your land in its season, and to bless all the work of your hand. You shall lend to many nations, but you shall not borrow. Amen. It's still 12. Yeah, I think the verse that's 14 as well. Sorry? You have to continue. Okay. It's, uh, okay. was and the Lord will make you the head and not the tail. You shall be above only and not be beneath. If you heed the commandment of the Lord, your God, which I command you today, and are careful to observe them, so you shall not turn aside from any of the words which I command you this day to the right or the left to go after other gods to. Yeah. Amen. Amen. So this is a proclamation that um, I wanted to share for all of us today before we start with the topic. Or... Can you hear me? Yes. No. Uh, unable to hear you. Uh, yeah. Can you hear okay. me? Yeah. Yes. Sir. Now we can hear you. Yes. All right. So this is a proclamation that I wanted all of us to proclaim today from the word. Um, before I go into uh, the subject of reviving faith at workplace, which is one of the biggest challenges that we all are going through today. So uh, the promise and proclamation and what we read in Deuteronomy, it says very clearly, the Lord will give you prosperity that he sowed to your ancestors uh, to give you blessing with many numerous livestock and abundant of crop. But this blessing comes with a condition if when we read this, when God says in, in the book of Deuteronomy, even in chapter 12, the Lord will send rain at the proper time for his rich treasury in the heavens and will bless all the work you do. You will lend to many nations, but you'll never need to borrow from them. But what is the condition? The condition is only if you listen to the commandment of the Lord your God. God says very clearly, only if you listen to the commandment, is when you will receive this blessing, right? You will be the head. You must not turn away from any of the commandments I'm giving you, nor follow after gods and worship them. So this blessing, why do we have this lack? Today, when the topic that I'm going to be talking about, the sharing, uh, reviving faith in your workplace. Today, why do we as believers, as uh, children of God, we find lack in our lives? If, if God has promised it, he has promised it. And it's there forever and ever. Heaven and earth will pass away, but the word of God will never pass away. His promise is already given to us. 
But why are we not receiving these promises? Why are we still living in lack, uh, in, in so much of um, you know, misery, in so much of poverty, in so much of challenges? The only reason is because we have not exercised what God has given us called faith. Now, how do you revive faith back? So that's the subject and the topic that I would want to share with you today. Um, so before going into that, um, I would like to have a small um, uh, introduction in terms of what I do. I'm basically from a sports management background. That I, uh, that's the area of work that I have. I, I work them up. So um, from the very beginning of my school and my college, uh, I had various ambitions in life that I always wanted to, uh, you know, work in different uh, areas of life, you know, because um, largely, I, I, I always believe that I've been blessed with so much of talents. But that's the age that you get, you get so distracted. You always want to accomplish with many things in life, but you're always at a crossroad. So to begin with, um, where do we stand today? with building our faith at workplace because today work has been the largest challenge because going back to see that how you built your careers over, over a period of time in your life is one of the biggest, um, 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 I would say, blessing that God has led us all in different ways, right? So I would like to um, share a screen uh, with everyone over here. I'm going to share the screen to Okay, uh, is it, can you all see this? Yes, we can see. All right. So what I would like to share is about reviving faith at workplace and how it impacts our life. And today, those are the critical areas Today, people post COVID, even even before COVID, um, you know, um, this is an ever evolving problem in our lives. You know, for generations we go through this, and that's why we we went through the proclamation of the book of Deuteronomy in twenty eight eleven, because this is an ongoing for generations after generation where we got to revive our faith at workplace. When you uh, to give you an example of how King David, uh, you know, he was tending his uh, his sheep, but that was his profession. But in his profession, he only had faith throughout because he never had ambitioned to be the king of Israel or you know to be a warrior. But he only believed and he had faith in God. And all this while, he was only praising and worshiping God. But that was his profession. But today, when you see that how uh, we go through uh, you know different phases of our life, but we fail to understand passion, our purpose and perspective. So here I would like to share about my work and my calling. Um, as, a, as, a, as an athlete, I had a lot of opportunities in life and that's one of been, that's been always been my passion and I never knew anything other than sport, uh, which I still uh, continue in this space. I feel that that's the gift that God has given me and I continue working in that space and what I could do with my passion, right? So today for all of us, we are working in different areas of our life. You know, where some must be working with church ministries, some in the corporate industry, some would be working in uh, private, public, and uh, independent businesses. A lot of uh, you know, uh, opportunities that we have, people have taken as their career. So without passion and purpose and perspective, I feel that today, uh, that is where we have a lack. That is where we, we see that our lack is. And how do we revive that? Because Every time we fall, we have to get up, right? There's no, unless you chose to fall down and say, I'm not going to get up, you'll never wake up ever again. So it's a choice that we all have. And today, how God revives us, how he gives us that opportunity to get up every time that you fall. It's just not once, but a hundred times, right? So with passion, purpose, and perspective, passion leads to purpose and purpose leads to perspective. Now, again, this perspective is not your own perspective, but it's a perspective of God. What God, whatever man proposes, God disposes, right? Do we all agree to that? Because that's what we have read over and over again. So with passion and purpose is the perspective of God, but not our perspective. Because as much as you are passionate, then you see the purpose in your work. 
in in the in the kind of work that you do and uh, whether it's even for if you're looking at example if i can give you an example if you see how um, mothers at home which is an unpaid job you know from morning till evening they really work for the entire family you know from keeping uh, the house clean to cooking to taking care of the uh, husband to children uh, it's it's a lot more work but this has a purpose a purpose someone who stitches up the family together and that is done with passion again and when you see the perspective of of the mothers at home uh, not much of opportunities are being given because but that's a choice and that's a willing or a willingness and obedience of god they have taken the role as mothers where they take care of the entire family now this is an unpaid job again and this comes with passion and purpose but what perspectives do we have towards it we feel that oh they are uneducated they just married and they have to stay at home and that's the kind of job no not at all god has led each and every one with a with a purpose and that purpose is today we choose our calling and that purpose is when we submit ourselves to the lord and say lord this is the space that i want to work with so coming back to what i have done over the years um with regards to my work i i had a lot of opportunities as an athlete uh, i could work with the government sector i i already ha- i had an opportunity to work as a um, you know civil uh, uh, servant where uh, my passion was always to be as a customs inspector you know through the sports quota i always wanted to become a custom customs inspector but that dream failed so miserably it never happened because god had a different plan and i never believed that it was my plan my desire my vision i wanted to do this it never worked the way i thought and that's when i realized that god had a perspective and i never obeyed or never went into the perspective of what god wanted me to be so um i had opportunity then i started looking at the corporate uh, industry then i wanted to get back into sport and sport management so i came to a crossroad so we all have a choice at times you know we come to a crossroad and to decide which path are we going to take am i going to you know um take the the lead in 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 the way where i wanted to uh, build my business or want to work for a corporate industry or a government we all go through this crossroads but i was at this at at that point of time i was at a crossroad because i didn't know whether should i take up a corporate job or i wanted to go back into a, go to a government job or do my own business i was at a crossroad but thanks be to god you know i had to make the choice after after more than a decade that you know this is what i wanted to lead as what my god has blessed me with my passion and purpose and what god perspective about my life was to serve because today you go back to the word of god god constantly keeps calling people to be servants of god work in his vineyard now that was a very difficult choice because when we look at from a worldly perspective we are so ambitious about our life and we have all the opportunities to be that successful per- person you know in the worldly ways but a, a lot you see that you lose passion when you don't have passion and purpose and your perspectives change but here as children of god we need to understand we need to really believe and have that faith that god has a certain perspective for you and if you don't seek that if you don't seek that perspective you will be the way that you wanted to be all your life and it will be too late to realize that how much of time uh, was lost and how much of opportunities was lost to even serve the kingdom of god so i had this opportunity to come back to sport and sport management and how i could impact lives through sport how i could transform lives through sport so that was uh, my calling and i realized it after a decade after a decade i was you know gallivanting all over going to working with corporate industry you know working with government agencies a lot of thing that will happen but i wasted all of my time but god brought me back because his perspective was right for me and how did that happen that happened only by faith so i had uh, an opportunity you know to uh, um with some very beautiful people who are chosen by god and i had them as mentors in my life and one is brother simon rodriguez who's not uh, is not there with us anymore but he's with the lord he passed away in covid he was one of my um, um you know mentors and he was one of my spiritual mentor and guide and when i used to share um about what i was going through 
because you're always messed up and mixed up today as believers as children of god we don't even have people to talk to if you really want to have a sharing of what you're really feeling what you're going through and if you need a solution you don't have anyone to talk to that's the real truth you might have 100 friends because even pub people to resonate with you to understand what you're going through uh, spiritual challenges what you're going through and um, you know uh, your career challenges what you're going through you don't have people that who can talk to you who can listen to you because they have their own perspective and that's when you know we get difficult to make our choices in life so going back to the perspective of god is always very much important and he gave me this he told me he gave me one solution he said elvis i want you to take the bible and read go prayerfully and read from the book of matthew and god will give you and show you the way he will give you the right path to need what and it was very uh, amateur for me at that point of time it seemed i've come for a big solution and uh, i know he's my spiritual mentor but he's asking me to go back and read this am i going to be a pastor i'm not going to be a pastor but i want to do my business i want to build lives i want to work passionately into sport but he said that's where your answer is because your perspective is not in align with god and that is very important for our perspectives to be aligned for most of the time we are not aligning our perspective with god and that's why we have the lack so today you see all our christian businessmen or people any business people they have so many wonderful successful businesses that they've done but they're always struggling with lack lack of what lack of faith lack of trust they don't trust people they say i'm a businessman but i don't trust anybody if you don't trust and how do you work with humanity so today when you see um, even with families today what are we teaching our our, our children do not don't trust anybody don't trust these things don't trust that this is the word of mistrust is what we're trying to teach but the word of god always teaches us to trust trust in the lord trust in everything that he has created because it's a blessing that what we have he asked me to read the book of uh, matthew and i'm sharing these verses and how my faith was revived back because my biggest challenge was about faith and i was very hesitant to take up any kind of project any kind of business that i wanted to do but in sport is sport is an area where you don't have um you know um great funding you don't have a lot of money that can be invested but you have value based projects that impacts millions of people it's not a commercial kind of a sport what you see across uh, in televisions and uh, the commercial uh, you know uh, sporting activities that happens that's completely different but what we're talking about is here about using sport as a platform to build lives to impact lives for the greater glory of god if today and that's how god wants to use you he will use you with the gift that he has given but how do you identify your own gift and talent it's only when you call when you when you surrender yourself into obedience so i had this challenge through my life about having this faith at my workplace because it was i was really struggling through because i don't have a person where i could really talk to about what are the challenges that you have at workplace you because when you start talking with business people or people who have accomplished they have their perspective and that perspective is not aligned with you they would tell you you know i will connect you with uh, uh, the biggest billionaires or millionaires and all these kind of people influencers but it's not in the perspective of what god has set for you in your life so how do you revive that faith so the book of matthew is what gave me the solutions to it and uh, today i would like to share this with you if you all can open the book of matthew to chapter 6 verse 33 matthew chapter 6 verse 33 can i read it so matthew chapter 6 verse 33 it very clearly reads it says seek ye first the kingdom of god and his righteousness and all these things will be added to you i repeat it says seek ye first the kingdom of god and all his righteousness and all these things will be added to you this was an eye opener for me because anything that does not begin with god ends in failures and this is exactly what my mentor was trying to explain to me he said you got to go back to the lord because you have to see from god's perspective not from your own if you're ch- having challenges at your workplace if you want faith god has given the blessings of faith to everybody you have to exercise that faith 
But where does faith come from? Faith comes only from reading and hearing the word of God. If I do not read and hear the word of God, where, how will I build my faith on? And this is for everybody, for whoever today who is listening and watching to this, whoever is doing great business, please understand that anything that does not begin with God ends in failures. So faith comes only by hearing and reading the word of God. So my first answer to this was to seek the kingdom of God. If you seek the kingdom of God, everything that you have, your lack, the challenges at your workplace will be taken care because God says, first seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. The second verse which, which transformed me, which really helped me to understand how do I have my business aligned with, with God's calling, with God's purpose and God's perspective. Matthew chapter 17, verse 20. This was the other answer. Matthew chapter 17, verse 20. have faith as small as the mustard seed, you can say to the mountain, move from here and it will move. Nothing will be impossible for you. So the perspective of God is always to exercise your faith. Now, where does faith come? Again, I'm coming back to it. It says faith comes from only from hearing and reading the word of God. If we do not read and hear the word of God, your faith is never going to be built up. So today, when you see that, if God says, you, all you have to do is exercise that mustard seed of faith. Mustard seed is the smallest of all seeds on this planet. But God says, as small as the mustard seed, if you can only exercise that small mustard seed of faith, even the mountains will move. Today, whatever challenges we are having at our workplace, you know, whether it's financial challenges, people management challenges, uh, the kind of businesses that we work with the world, world, worldly businesses, it's all a big challenge. But if you have faith as a mustard seed and God will make mountains move, your mountain can be today can be, uh, you know, the biggest financial problem that you have. Biggest financial crisis can be a mountain today. People management can be a mountain today. Paying rents to your office can be a mountain today. Getting proper businesses can be a mountain today. All this will move if you can only exercise the mustard seed of faith, what God calls us. This is how it helped me to understand how do I revive faith at my workplace because I was not exercising that mustard seed of faith. So it was my fault. So when you see that, when you start aligning with God's perspective, you will know where are we going wrong? We pray about it. We have, we, we talk to God, we kneel down, we cry about it, fasting and pray. We do all of it, but we still don't see things move. For the only reason being that we don't exercise our faith. And faith is a very strong component. It's the most big, it's the most, um, I would say it's the most powerful thing in our, in, is what God has blessed us with. But he wants us to exercise that. You have to give it out. You have to release that faith every time. So today, this was one of my solutions to revive my faith at workplace. My third uh, um, answer was in the same book of Matthew in chapter 21, verse 22. Matthew chapter 21, verse 22. It reads, if you believe, you will receive whatever you ask for, but only in prayers. So God aligns you back with him, with his perspective. He says, if you only believe, you will receive whatever you ask for, but you can, you should ask it only in prayers. So God brings back to his perspective and say, this is my perspective. If you want things to be successful, if you want to get out of lack, if you want to get out of uh, your struggles, if you want to have a purpose and passion to enhance your purpose and passion, you got to be in my perspective. And that is to get yourself in prayers. Ask to me in prayers. God says, if you only believe and ask, it's again, it's exercising your faith. If you have faith, you will believe. God says, if you have faith, you will receive whatever you ask for, but only in prayers. This was my third answer uh, as a solution to reviving my faith at my workplace. And in the same chapter again, Matthew chapter 22, verse 14. 
Matthew chapter 22, verse 14. It reads, for many are called, but few are chosen. So when you're in the perspective of God, first God says, you first seek my kingdom. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and all these things shall be added unto you. Second, he says, you have faith as a mustard seed and you see how we're going to revive with everything. You can ask the mountains to move, it will move for you. And third, he says, come to me in prayers. Believe, have faith and come to me in prayers. Have faith in me. He says, God says, have faith in me. Ask me in prayers and you will receive everything. And the fourth, he says, many will be called, but only few will be chosen for his greater kingdom. So today, the kind of work, whatever we are blessed with, you know, we are going to be a blessing for our families, for ourselves, and for all the people across the, in our lives that we come across at your workplace. So today, to revive faith at workplace, God very clearly says, I have called many people, but only few are chosen. And I'll tell you why you are the chosen one. And in the book of Matthew, chapter 24, verse 14, if you can turn to Matthew, chapter 24, verse 14. And this gospel of the kingdom will be proclaimed throughout the whole world as a testimony to all nations. This is a very beautiful and a turning point to understand what faith is and what this verse God answers you through. First, he says, you seek my kingdom. When you seek your, my kingdom and with all your, uh, the kingdom of God with all his righteousness and everything will be added unto you. That's the first promise God gives. Secondly, he says, you have to exercise your mustard seed of faith to make mountains move. And third, God says, to make mountains move, you've got to believe in me and you have to only come to me in prayers. Ask me anything in prayers and I will give it to you. And then God says, once he gives us what we want when you ask in prayers, he says, you will be a testimony. Because here he says, the gospel of the kingdom will be proclaimed throughout the whole world as a testimony to all nations. So your, when God's perspective becomes your perspective, you become the testimony to the whole world. Today, if I'm sharing about reviving faith at my workplace, it's just not only in my workplace, faith, uh, you know, reviving my faith with my family, uh, with my friends, with my ecosystem, with everybody, even with reviving my faith with God. Trust me, today, that's what God wants us. And that's what he wants us to see from his perspective. And today, this verse, Matthew chapter 24, verse 14, he says, and this gospel of the kingdom, the kingdom of God, he says, will be proclaimed throughout the whole world as a testimony to all nations. So we become a testimony. So the choice was for me, do I want to be a testimony? Yes, I want to be. Today, that's what the God has given me an opportunity to share this testimony to all of you all. And how? Because I could revive my faith. Why? I chose to seek his kingdom first. As per the book of Matthew, chapter 6, verse 33, I proclaimed. He said, seek ye first the kingdom of God. I proclaimed it. I had that mustard seed of faith that I had to release it. I went back to God in prayers and God heard my prayers. And then I, he made me, he, he showed me all the platforms that why he chose me. And I will go back to the next slides to share how God chose me. And I believe that God chose me for his greater kingdom. And I will be a testimony for the people and everybody who comes across my life and for the rest of the world, I will be a testimony. The last verse was, Matthew chapter 25, verse 23. Matthew chapter 25, verse 23. It reads, it says, His Lord said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. So, when you see the sequence of reviving your faith back, what is the ultimate? When you get in the perspective of God, ultimately, when you finish your work, God says, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful. I will make you ruler over many things. And that's another promise. You begin with a promise and you end with a promise. God says, if you seek my kingdom with all righteousness, all things shall be added unto you. And he concludes, he says, well done, well done, my faithful servant. This is, a, in, in just the book of Matthew, if God could speak to you 
so much and he promises from the beginning to the end. He says, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. Today for us to revive faith, we have to seek God. And that's what I did. When I was going through the most difficult phase of my life, it's not that things have changed a lot. Uh, from God's perspective, a lot has changed. From my perspective, I feel that it's still a lot of things has to change. But we will, as humans, we will always be, um, you know, um, cribbing and whining about lack in our lives. But God says, I have blessed you abundantly. But the question is, have you received it with faith? If we do not exercise faith, we will not receive anything, whether at our workplace, in our personal life, with our family, with our friends, with our children, you've got to release faith. And that comes, faith comes only by hearing and reading the word of God. So my solution, when I wanted to revive faith, because I was lacking faith at my work, I was thinking, Amma, what will I do? You know, because I'm not feeling that I'm not going to be successful taking up sport as my career. And it's a very difficult phase that I want to, I'm, I'm, I'm working with because the road that I chose is I want to do sports management where I want to work with vulnerable people, vulnerable children and youth. I never wanted to work in the commercial space. People laughed at me. They said, you've done sports management graduation. You've done so much. You've been working with the corporate. You've got such high paid job and you want to choose something like this. And everybody laughed at me. And I, there were times I started doubting my own self. Did I make the right choice? But when I started to look from God's perspective, when I went back to the word of God, because that's where I was thinking, I, I knew that I was lacking faith. Because when I went back to my faith, my faith is in Christ. My faith is in Christ Jesus, because he is the promise keeper. He's a way maker. He's a promise keeper. So that's where I built my faith back. And when I went back to my uh, mentor, and I told him, uh, this is what the reading was. And this is how God spoke to me. And he said, that's where you make a beginning right now. So that's where I started, um, you know, working even more efficiently, where I could believe things. I could see things in a much more different perspective because I started seeing from the perspective of God. Because this was the vision when God gave, he gave a vision. When I started reviving my faith, I had new vision. And when God gives a vision, he also gives you the provision to it. And what was the vision? The vision was to build lives. And today when you see, you're cluttered with so many things across you, you know, in the world, you have innovations, leadership, motivation, research, technology, success, so many things that we talk about. But what is it all connected with? It's all connected with our lives. It's all connected with lives, building lives. Today, as parent, how much of time do we you all invest in, in your children, in your family members, in just building lives? We start planning from the day you're born. If you are, as a parent, when you're planning uh, you know, for children's lives, how much more God would have planned for our lives? But why are we not getting into the perspective of God? And today, when you don't get into the perspective of God, and that's when you have lack in our life. Today, we have lack with financials. It's not that you're in poverty because you have not adapted or you have not exercised your faith to receive the abundance from God. And that's, that's, the, that's the blessing. God says, release your faith. So building lives was the vision God gave me. And I started working with the most vulnerable children. And one of my biggest projects, which I uh, first, when I took the project was about uh, for sports for children living with HIV and AIDS. People laughed at me. So they're all going to die in a few days, few weeks, what nonsense you're doing, you've quit your good job, you're doing all these things, you know, you want to, um, uh, you know, start working on sports for children, are they going to the Olympics? So much of discouragement, so much of, uh, um, you know, um, negative uh, comments and stuff like that, it was very hurtful, you know, it was very hurtful, I, it puts you back into a place where you start doubting about your faith, you start doubting about your work, when you start doubting about yourself, you lose your faith. You lose your faith every time what you have. You got to go back again in, you know, like go back to Matthew chapter 21, verse 22. It says, if you believe you'll receive whatever you ask for. I could only ask for knowledge and wisdom because every time I can't be a fool making wrong choices, right? So you come back to God and say, God, give me that wisdom and knowledge that I can make the right decision for myself and for everything uh, because a lot of people are dependent to me. So I first took up this project for children and youth living with HIV and AIDS. We started with 20 kids uh, who were in the age group of six and seven years old up to 11 years old, who didn't know anything about sport. 
and the immunity was so bad. And you know the kind of stigma and discrimination what children have across the world, especially related to HIV. So I took up a project to see how I can build lives through uh, sport. And the, it, it took almost a decade for me for to tell the world, to prove to the world what sport can do to build up the immune system, to eradicate stigma and discrimination, get them on the mainstream, and uh, you know get them to be as equal as anyone else. It took 10 years for me to just do that. But God took me through that whole process of 10 years. I asked God, why did it even take 10 years for me to do this? But everything, when you sow a seed, it takes time to grow as a tree. And even and, and that's how God uh, has you know, well, created everything around us. It takes time. In his time, we say about in his time. But are you willing to go through his perspective? If your passion, if your purpose has to be aligned with God's perspective, you will see the success of it. Anything that does not begin with God ends in failures. And that's where I started to have more faith because I didn't want to fail into this. I said, God, I want to have more and more faith. Every time I felt that lack, when there was financial crisis, when we didn't have proper sponsors, when you didn't have proper uh, people to support the initiative, you break down every time because you're dealing with uh, thousands and thousands of children across the country. But here, this small project which started with 20 kids, which went up to more than 3,000 children who started doing sports across Karnataka, all HIV positive kids. It came a time where uh, some of the kids who were the best of it, uh, who, were, who went to the Children's Olympics. In 2015, these HIV positive kids, who uh, two of them participated at the Children's Olympics in Netherlands. And this is when the whole world started to look at it and say, is this really happening? Is HIV positive kids run? I said, yes, of course. Today, they have participated in the Boston Marathon in America, uh, the Gold Coast Marathon in Australia, uh, Nelson Mandela Marathon in uh, South Africa. They travel all continents, so the Phuket International Marathon in Thailand, all over, all continents, all five continents, they made the presence today. The Jerusalem Marathon, one of the girls from Bida who participated at the Jerusalem Marathon, they're all runners today. And they are children who are born and living with HIV and AIDS. So God raises children and God raises all of us from the ashes. And he always makes something very beautiful. From being from victims, we become victors. And today, as, as much as we've seen the grace of God upon our life, the successes, we all have good homes that we sit, we enjoy ourselves, we feel so blessed about it. But at the same time, we still play the victim card. We say, Lord, I have lack in this. I don't have finances. My health is not good. We have so much of lack. We only play the victim. But God always makes you a victor. And he says, if you want to be a victor, you have to get out of this victim mentality. And for that, you have to get back to the book of Matthew to see, seek the kingdom of God with all his righteousness. That's where it all begins. with. And he says, all these things shall be added unto you. You don't need to sit and worry about it. So when I could see these children who accomplished, and then I started to believe even more because there are times you want to see the signs, you want to see the real results, but it took 10 years, 10 long years to showcase the whole world that this is possible through sport. And nobody even thought about it, that how you can build an immune, immune system and make life so healthy just by a sporting activity, but not having people you know, addicted to more of medication and all kinds of drugs that you give them and you still kill them. You know, you, it's, it's a part, yes, medication is needed. I would not say you don't need it, but largely sport is also needed for your health, health and wellness. You know, you've got to be active and that's more important. So this is how I could see my purpose. And it took 10 years to see my purpose. Why? Because the day when you start looking at from God's perspective, it takes time. You got a journey with the Lord. It's not that today, tonight I kneel down and pray, the next morning I get it. Yes, you can exercise that faith. You will still get it. But at the same time, you've got a journey. You've got a journey with the Lord to see from God's perspective and how you can revive faith at your workplace. And I'm sure today a lot of us are going through a lot of challenges, are going through a lot of uh, you know, um, uh, difficulties at our workplace. So today when I turn back and I see how the Lord has been gracious and blessed all the projects, it was just not one project. We traveled to more than 45 countries in just 10 years time. We've traveled 45 countries and we've seen children represent all over from so many international uh, representations that we've done. 
So today I saw the hand of God because when I didn't believe that, I thought sport was only about uh, doing commercial uh, event with sport and that's how you can you know, be very successful. But God said, no, my purpose is different for you because today life, it's all about building lives. If you do not build lives in the space that you work with, you have to be, you have to submit yourself to that passion. When you look at it from God's perspective, God always wants us to build lives. That is his call. His call is to serve, be a servant of God. He always calls, he says, the, the harvest is plenty, but the laborers are few. It's just not only about sharing the word of God, but it's also sharing the love of God. So today you can share the love of God through your workspace, in your work areas, with your friends and people. It's just not about the word. It's about the love of God as well. And how that you become a witness to it. It's the same thing, Matthew chapter 24, verse 14. He says, and this gospel for the kingdom will be proclaimed to the whole world and you will be a testimony to all nations. And that's an affirmation. That's a confirmation of God blesses you. But only if you chose to walk in his perspective, you can revive faith. You can revive faith at your workplace, at your home, in any environment. So this has been the larger blessing that I've seen over, over the years, over more than a decade. And uh, there were, and, and this is the hand of God that moved because I chose to go back to reviving my faith. And first, you need to have that willingness to say, I want to revive my faith. If that doesn't call, doesn't come into you. If you don't take that call, it's, you'll be still sitting with lack in your life. So the basic principles for all who are listening today, who are watching it, how do you restore faith at work? How do you restore it? Today, yes, we all had at some point of time, but today we have lost it, but we want to restore it back. How do you restore faith in your life all over again? These are some of the very key uh, teachings that I would, I would like to share. Some verses for those who want to write it and take it down. Please take it down. If you, take it, you can look into the book of Proverbs. If you see the book of Proverbs, Proverbs chapter 16, verse 3. Proverbs chapter 16, verse 3. Can someone read that for me, please? Proverbs chapter 16, verse 3. Commit your works to the Lord and your thoughts will be established. Amen. Commit your work to the Lord, then your plans will succeed. This is a different version, a translation, different mm -hmm. version. Commit your work to the Lord and then your plans will succeed. This is one of the key principles, biblical principles that you got to use to revive your faith back at work. No matter whichever space that you're working with, commit your work to the Lord first and then you'll see your plan succeed. Proverbs chapter 16, verse 11. Proverbs chapter 16, verse 11. The Lord demands... Yes, please read it. Okay, so I'll, I'll, I'll read in Hindi. It, it's chapter uh, 16, verse 11, right? Correct. Yeah, it's it's Sacha Taraju or Palade Yahova Kior se hote hai, Thali me jitne but kare hai, sub usike banai hue hai. So the Lord the Lord demands fairness in every business. He sets the standards. Who sets the standards in our business? It's God. So it's not our standards. When we start doing business, see most of, like I said, when you go back and see. Today, we have such successful business people. They have so much of lack. They cannot trust their own employees. They cannot trust their people. They cannot trust anybody. Why? Because they set the standards. If they only had to follow the biblical standards, that's what God says. Your business has to be fair and clear, which means you've got to be very honest. It calls for a lot of um, 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 you know, honesty with what God defines the way you do business with. And he sets the standards. Today, if you want to excel well, we all put up our vision plan, our purpose for our businesses. But if you don't have standards, your purpose and vision is not met because it's not in the perspective of God. So the Lord demands fairness in every business and he sets the standards. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 58. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 58.
It reads, therefore, my beloved, be steadfast, immovable, always excelling in the work of the Lord, because you know that in the Lord you are a labor, is not in vain. Would you want to read that in Hindi, Brother Ashish? It's like, uh, is liye hai mere priya bhaiyo, drah aur atal raho, aur prabhu ke kaam mein sarvada badhte jao, kyunki ye jante ho ki tumhara parishram prabhu mein vyarth nahi hai. Yep. So God says, you have to be steadfast and immobile, but always excelling in your work. Work of the Lord. It says, it's very beautiful. He said, therefore, my beloved, be steadfast, immobile, always excelling in the work of the Lord. Because whatever you do to mankind, God says, you do the least of these people, you're doing it for me. When you're in the work of the Lord, when God calls you, when you're looking from the perspective of God, he said, you will always excel and your labor will not be in vain. Whatever you work hard, you struggle, it will not go in vain because God is going to acknowledge that. And that's why he said in the book of Matthew, when you read, he concluded, he said, um, in Matthew chapter 25, verse 23, he says, well done, good and faithful servant. Tomorrow, when we go back to heaven and God is not going to ask you, are you were you a billionaire? Were you this? Were you that? He only wants to, you, all you want to hear is that, well done, my faithful servant. That's all you want to hear. And that's what he, God is going to tell you also. Right? The last verse for you is 2 Chronicles chapter 15, verse 7. Second Chronicles chapter 15, verse 7. But as for you, be strong and do not give up, for your work will be rewarded. What does it say? Be strong and do not give up, for your work will be rewarded. So if you want your work to be rewarded, first you got to revive your faith and faith has a different principles. Follow the perspective of God. Stay aligned with what God says. And God speaks in the book of Matthew and I'm sure there are different uh, gospels. God speaks in different ways. But for me, God spoke, me, spoke to me through the book of Matthew to give me a solution how to revive my faith. And it was very from the book of Matthew from chapter six to verse 25, chapter six to chapter 25, very clearly spoke. First, he said, seek the kingdom of God. Have faith as a mustard seed. Uh, uh, you know, you got to believe and ask whatever you want in prayers. And I will call you. You will be a chosen one. And you will be a witness, a testimony for me through your work. And then God says, I will call you and say, well done, my good servant. This is what we want in our lives. Right? And this is how I built and revived my faith over the years when I was struggling so much. But it all solutions came overnight only from reading the book of Matthew. When I surrendered that night, I said, Lord, I want your answers. And God spoke to me. These are the answers. And that's how I revived my faith at workplace. I'm sure today for most of you all who are having your own challenges at work, workplace, please get back because seek the first the kingdom of God and all these things shall be added unto you. But, and that is about reviving your work at faith at workplace. Only God can revive our faith. When we examine our hearts and decide to seek him once again. It's a choice that we make that we have to seek him. If you do not seek him, you will not have the abundance, but you'll only have the lack with you. So the last conclusion, once you're in his grip, he is a way maker for you. He's a miracle worker. He's a promise keeper and he's light in the darkness. My God, and that is who you are. And I'm sure we all know this song and it's a most powerful song and that revives our faith. He says, he is a way maker, a miracle worker, a promise keeper, a light in the darkness. God, and that is who he is. And we all believe that it's only through surrendering yourself and looking from the perspective of God, your purpose, your passion will be revived. Your faith will be revived in just not at your workplace, but in your personal life with God. Your, your, your personal, your spiritual life with God, your personal life with your family and everything around you. Let's walk worthy, worthy in the Lord. Thank you so much for this evening. And if you have any questions for me on this, I would love to explain or share 
from what we have um, had this uh, uh, reading today from different uh, chapters. If you have any questions, please do ask me. And um, I would like to thank uh, Brother Ashish and Shalini for this opportunity and for being a part of this family prayer. And God bless everyone uh, who's been a part of this this evening. Please feel free to ask me any questions that you want. Thank you so much, uh, Elvis, uh, for such a powerful uh, word of God. And yes, we can have passion, but, but without God's blessing, we cannot have purpose and perspective. And that is very much align, uh, very much important to align from our life with the God. And that is, yes, as you rightly mentioned that Parmeshwar ka raji hum khojenge to humare sar paas sab kuch hoga. So may God bless you for such a powerful uh, word of God. And, and may God bless all the entire plan which you have and which we have seen. In fact, uh, I'll, I'll mention over here, uh, main brother Josh, uh, Elvis ke saath mein mulaqat hamnoh ka last month hua and he was with one athlete jo ke uh, table tennis player hai and uh, unke paas apne dono pair nahi hai. And wo wheelchair pe table tennis khelte hai aur so that, that was the work uh, that Elvis is doing. May God bless you with such a uh, vision and mission you have. And yes, you have rightly mentioned that you have not wasted your 10 years other than you were just trying to align with the purpose and perspective of God. So may God bless you. Thank you so much. And, and thank uh, you. Just, yes, thank you. And uh, if, if anyone has any testimony or uh, any thanksgiving, he or she can raise uh, his or her hand. Uh, I'll, I'll allow uh, to unmute. And uh, if not, then uh, I'll, I'll request for the closing prayer and uh, Brother Jushan is with us. And uh, there is one prayer request from Facebook. And uh, there is Sister Sheila Joby. She mentioned in the chat, rather than comment, urgent prayer request. Uh, uh, her mother is not feeling well. She has high fever with severe cold, severe stomach pain, sleepness, and leg pain. So she is asking for the prayers that she could sleep well and she can receive the healing in the name of Jesus Christ. So over to you, Buddha Joshi. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Is it audible? Yes, yes. yes. Uh, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let's close our eyes. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Ribana Sham Dadabauda. Ribana Raguda Rattabauda Baram Dadabada Baladuda. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Thank you, Jesus, for your love and care. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for your mercy and grace. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for your life for us. Thank you, Jesus, 
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. For everything. Once again, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. For you have done for me. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for everything that you have in our life. Our praise and worship to you, our God. Last one week, you protected us, guided us, saved us, healed us, remembered us. And we have entered into a new weekend of God. Are we willing for that? Two answers are there. We are not. Second answer is we are because we are the chosen one of God. We thank you and praise you for giving us a beautiful one, one more weekend in our life, oh God. You protected and guided us and you saved us because there is a reason because you want us to do more in your name. Thank you, Jesus, for everything. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your, I mean, everything that you have done in our life, oh God. Thank you, oh God. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you and praise you for this beautiful day you've given us, oh God. We thank you and praise you for all the things you have done in our life, oh God. We thank you and praise you and glorify your holy name, oh God. Submitting each and every prayer matter of God unto you. Especially, thank you for this meeting that you have added in our life, oh God. Thank you for the beautiful message that we have heard today. Faith that is everything in our believers' life, oh God. In the Bible, it says, whatever you ask in the name of Jesus, you will receive it. We are worshipping and we are praying and we are asking in the living Father's name. We are not praying, asking in the Father's name who is still in the graveyard. We are, we are asking in the name of Jesus who is still alive, who died for us and raised from death on the third day. So putting our prayer matter unto you, especially I pray for the brother Elvis Joseph of God. Hallelujah. Thank you and praise you, O God, for the beautiful message that you have given through him. Use him mightily, bless him mightily, guide him. I mean, I mean, do great things in his life. New healing, new blessing, new signs and wonders, new miracles is going to happen. A new I mean, I mean, revelation prophecy is going to be poured upon him in the name of Jesus more and more. I mean, use him mightily for the kingdom of God. There are many people who are still hungry and thirsty, oh God, through this brother. I mean, hallelujah, the word of God should be blessing for them, oh God. I pray for his family. I pray for his ministry. Bless them, oh God. Hallelujah. Use them, oh God. Guide them, oh God. Let your light shine upon their family and their ministry. And it should be a blessing for others. Through them, the light that you are giving, oh God. Thank you for the beautiful message, oh God. Thank you for the anointing message, anointed message that you have given to this brother, oh God. Hallelujah. Bless him mightily. Father, Son of the Holy Spirit, bless him, oh God, hallelujah. Use him mightily for more in this, I mean, in this, hallelujah, in this ministry life, oh God, hallelujah. I pray for the sister who has shared, oh God, hallelujah. A message, I mean, hallelujah, who has dropped a message after seeing our Zoom meeting, oh God. I mean, the same faith that sister have, the same faith we also have because we are worshiping a true father. Oh God. We pray for that healing right now to happen. We are in different place, in different I mean, area, different state, but my father is one. 
We are praying to our one father. I mean, that, that father is going to heal upon that sister right now in the name of Jesus. Where it should be healed, it should be healed right now in the name of Jesus. I mean, I mean, I mean, we, I mean, we are going to hear a good message. We are going to hear a good testimony. I mean, after this prayer, the healing has happened in the name of Jesus. Oh God, hallelujah. A complete healing in the name of Jesus. From the top of the hair till the bottom of the leg in the name of Jesus. Let your fire burn upon that body. Let your, I mean, I mean, I mean, blood seen on that body and complete healing happen on the physical body in the name of Jesus. Mentally and physically, a complete healing upon that body in the name of Jesus. We believe your word is a healed her. Your, I mean, your, your one touch has healed her right now in the name of Jesus. Thank you, O God. Thank you, O God. Thank you. We believe that healing has happened, oh God. We believe, hallelujah, amen, healing has happened right now on that, amen, sister, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I pray for amen, Ashmai, oh God, hallelujah. Be with him, guide him, protect him, oh God. Use him mightily for this ministry, oh God. Amen. Hallelujah. Do great things in his life. New, new miracles, new healing, new blessing, new signs and wonders. Amen. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus upon his ministry, oh God. Hallelujah. Amen. I pray for Elisha. I pray for Amen. Hallelujah. Shall you over sister? Hallelujah. Be with them. Guide them. Protect them. Save them. Do great things in their life. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Hallelujah. Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Bless them mightly. Cover the wings, sealing you with the blood of Christ, your God. Hallelujah. Amen. Once again, we are submitting each and everyone who has, I mean, entered to this platform, oh God. Hallelujah. For this meeting, oh God. Hallelujah. I mean, we are, I mean, I mean, hallelujah. Thank you for the word of God. I mean, we, are, we each one of us are healed. Each one of our blessed. And each one of us are anointed in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. There are some prayer matters that we cannot share, oh God. Hallelujah. I mean, you know that, oh God, hallelujah. We are submitted unto you, oh God, hallelujah. I mean, hallelujah. I mean, there is a limit in front of the platform to share, but there is something that is in the heart, oh God, hallelujah, that we cannot share. And we believe that you have touched, oh God. You will touch each one of us in the name of Jesus, I declare, oh God, hallelujah. New miracle, new week, new days are coming, new hours are coming, new week is coming, new miracle, new healing, new blessing, hallelujah, new hallelujah. Just Testimony is going to be heard in this coming days, in this coming week. In the name of Jesus, we pray, O God, hallelujah. Mentally, physically, financially, spiritually, bless us, O God, hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Bless us, O God. Heal us, O God. Let your presence be there in our life, O God. Nothing should come into our life. In front of our, <clears throat> nothing should come in front of our eyes and also in our life, O God. That is not your will, O God, hallelujah. Submitting each and everything in a mighty hand. Bless us. From all the evil tricks and techniques and attack of the evil powers of God. Submitting each and everything in the mighty hand. I pray for all the prayer mantles that we have submitted unto you. We believe. We believe. We have given to you and it is answered in the name of Jesus. Thank you, O God. Thank you. Thank you for everything, O God. Submitting each and everything in the mighty hand, oh God. Thank you for hearing our praise. Thank you for answering our praise. In Jesus' name, we pray and declare. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, Brother Joshan. Once again, uh, I thank each one of you who are with us over the Zoom and over the Facebook. Thank you so much for your presence. May God bless you.